Hi. <laughs> hey, hey, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Oh my god, my cats are looking weird at me. Uh, okay. It seems we're live. It, se it seems things are working. Um, anyway. Hi, everyone. Oh, God, that's my calendar. You're not supposed to see that. But there was nothing important there. Um, <laughs> this is a little bit haphazard right here. Um, let's think. Okay, what was I going to say? Jesus Christ, like, preparations here, like, did not go well. Um, did you know that, like, Poland... It's got like a terrible government right now. That's not cool. Um, yeah, okay. So I haven't had my coffee yet. I just made a coffee. Uh, what else is up? Oh yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, everyone. Um, so today we'll be going over um, a little bit of um, uh, Rust workspace stuff because of course. And then, um, hey, good morning, Dan. Welcome. Um, so some workspace stuff. Oh, I was looking at this keyboard. Uh, it's not quite a keyboard. It's a pedal for your feet because my pinky isn't great and my wrist doesn't like it. So I was thinking if you like have little pedals or someone suggested it was like, oh, you know, pedals are great. And I was like, hmm, maybe it's a little bit expensive though. But if it saves your wrist, it might be worth it. <laughs> I don't know. Like imagine uh, doing Vim but with your foot. I I maybe. That's 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 my thing here. May, may, maybe it works. I don't know. Um. Anyway, for today, what I was thinking that we should do is there's a cool PR in which I saw last night. Um. Which might be cool to look at. Oh, by the way, uh, the washing machine's going off. In case you're wondering what that sound is. So, uh, Katarina Space Cookie made a PR <laughs> to add lip support to cross-gen, which I'm really excited about. Um, what else is there? Is there any other interesting stuff? There is none. Okay. Yeah, may maybe, maybe this one. Uh, we should probably take a look at that one. Okay. Um, so what else, what else, what else, what else? What has been new? Nothing much with me, actually. I've, I've just been writing like lots of um, issue things. What's new with y'all? <laughs> that was this Friday, the 14th of <laughs> September on this fine 2018 late eve. I think summer's ending in nine days. I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. On the one hand, like peak summer here in Berlin was so warm. And we we didn't like uh, Europe doesn't really do airco like air, air conditioning rare, which is good for the environment. Right. But fans were also sold out like aircon AC, like whatever. Right. But not having a fan when it's like 30 plus degrees at night just like lying there sweating that's rough so I, I i'm not missing that part but um i'm not looking forward to like rain and winter and short days let's get a little bit sad when days are short so um i don't know 10 10 nine, nine days till summer's end not particularly excited but also i can do it with a little bit less heat um oh yeah <laughs> all right so um two things today like we're gonna review this pier we're gonna look at uh, a little bit of a workspace tour because people have not been asking for it but i saw someone else do it and i was like hey you know what that's probably useful so um i've never proper done one of these but i can explain how i work um, actually quite quite a bunch of people are like sometimes ask me for like random things and they're like oh my god you know vim and i'm like uh i guess <laughs> all right so most of everything i'll be talking about uh in the next whatever minutes uh is uh saved here let's zoom this out a little bit all right so this is uh my dot files repo i have one for mac os specifically also which i stopped using last year 
Oh my god, it's almost like my Linux versary again. Huh. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I stopped using my OSX thought files. I stopped updating them like quite a while back. Um, as you can see, it looked a little bit different. Like we had the date in the bottom right corner. We had like some tabs for Tmux, which actually used to work. Where there's CPU and network and memory at the top, which we no longer have because we don't have the fancy bar anymore. Um, but yeah, this used to be what my setup looked like and I switched over to Linux last year and now it looks like, well, you can see the stream. So more like this. Um, Workgrave's always floating over here, which I can't select. So, you know, you might see a little, a little thingy there. Uh, okay. But so, um, Probably the best place to start is uh, what if we wanted to make a new project, right? So say uh, we're gonna like create a new a new project here. Where we're like, okay, um, let's build Hypercore protocol. So we've got this thing called AO REST, uh, where the AO command oh, goes to templates. So I, I have all these base templates for whenever I start a project. I, I think this might like work well. If I say like, hey, this is the way I do projects, this is the way I start projects, then you know, you, you can sort of like look at it. So, um, like, uh, so it rust goes into my templates there. There's like rust here. Uh, you can actually see the, uh, the this is the ew script, which is just available. I thought it would be funny to make it sound like ew. Um, so I built it. <laughs> I just set the templates there, which points to uh, a copy of this directory, this whole thing, right? And then we uh, call the main file inside of it, right? So we say template is templates main. And then we check if it exists and then we call it and we shift over the arguments. Um, so say we pass seven command line arguments using shift you uh, drop the head of it. So in this case, the word ew would disappear, right? Or like the path to the script. And then all the other arguments are passed down as is to the template, to the main file. And then in the main file, uh, if we go here, oh, coffee break. You're, you'll be able to see a main file and that main file will contain, um, we'll be looking at some like env code and uh, some other stuff. <sighs> I'm supposed to be somewhere at one thirty. It's noon on the mark right now. Um, I was supposed to do a lot of stuff this week. I didn't do that much stuff this week. So I'm a little bit bummed out. But it's okay because I've had like productive weeks before. This is just a bit of a less less productive week. All right. So in templates rest main. So we just call it this, right? Ew, rest, let's call this a uh, hypercore protocol. And it says, oh, what does this project do? And then, you know, we look in here. First off, we load some shared files. So just like some shared common methods, mostly for copying over files and being able to do stuff like replace, right? That's a method that comes out of this thing. And, you know, we just, uh, some nvars and if uh, if they're, they're not passed if a positional argument is not passed then what we do is uh, we do a read dash r and then we we set it and then that's good and at the end of it we copy over like all these files that are local to here right so we have our uh, everything's like with this uh, in intertwined stuff it's kind of cool uh, does it do much else? No, it doesn't do much else. <laughs> so it just does all this stuff. And then, then you have like your base project and the, the base project, you know, just exists. It just does a bunch of stuff, away, which I, I think is kind of nice. Um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, okay. Um, okay, okay. <sighs> Let me sit down nicely. Let me have a sip of coffee. So uh, say we want to uh, build this hypercore protocol thing, right? I'm gonna say uh, protocol definitions for hypercore. 
under my name. Oh, no, under .rs. All right. That just does that stuff. And now we've created a hypercore protocol. And as you can see, I just opened up like a whole new session. So I'm in here. I tapped the MX command. Uh, now MX is a pretty cool tool, which I copied from someone and tweaked enough that I can now say I wrote it myself. Uh, basically took the idea and then like ended up rewriting it over the course of four years or so. Um, but MX, what it does is it uh, creates a session or it, it looks at your directory and says, okay, uh, is Tmux running? So Tmux is called uh, Tmux because uh, it's a terminal multiplexer. And what that means is it allows you to run virtual terminals inside of your main terminal. You can kind of think of it as lightweight uh, tabs of sorts, like different uh, environments, different workspaces inside of one terminal. So instead of like needing to spawn new terminals, like, oh, look, hey, it's a new terminal, right? And it's kind of like annoying. Then what this does is it just has this uh, single terminal and we can like go in between sessions like this, right? Rather than like, oh, look, it's uh, we've got five terminals now. And then you like need to remember which tab it was rather than like having them be named uh, by default. Oh, my camera just halted. Uh, webcam. Ba -ba. Cool. Every now and then my computer lags and then like the video drops and instead of like it dropping the video, it will start lagging and it's really annoying and we ought to fix it someday. <laughs> is this better? Maybe it is. Is this better? Maybe it is. I don't, I don't know. It's, so there's a problem where I can't see my screen if I'm like talking into this thing, but may, maybe I'll just do this for a little bit. <laughs> All right, so that's Tmux, right? Uh, so we have like a split workspace, like um, this thing creates a split workspace. It's supposed to set up like virtual shared sessions uh, within the same workspace, which I never did. Uh, it used to work, but I never fixed it for Linux. Um, I had one for knowledge, which is my note taking thing. I had one for my dot files, so I could like always go in and edit dot files. I had one for our templates, so we could always jump in and fix our templates whenever we saw something wasn't like right. You know, so you always get like that continuous improvement of workflow. You continuously get to like scrapbook everything together that you think is useful. Um, but yeah, we, <laughs> we kind of stopped doing that. So, because I set up, like, I moved away from Z shell and Z shell had all that stuff. And, um, I never went back to Z shell. I tried to get it back up, but like wouldn't work. So I don't know. We should dive in and make this uh, link window stuff work again. But yeah, so the, the, the base idea is we just have a TMUX set up, um, Vim here on the left hand side, uh, opens up readme markdown that it exists, uh, but only if it exists. Oh God, because we're using fish, this thing glitches out also, which is super annoying. So yeah, <laughs> is it perfect? Nope, not at all, but yeah. Uh, what are cats doing? I don't know what cats are doing. Um, yeah okay so once you have like a project running uh, right then we have like a thing here then uh we can start running like building some rust stuff right so first thing we do is cargo check which will uh make our cpu spin here in the top right corner uh damn it there's like no no good position for this microphone maybe maybe like this Hello, <laughs> no, we're not doing that. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just keeping it like this for now. It means I can't see myself, which is kind of weird, but yeah, sure. All right. <sighs> right, so now it's just building this thing. It's checking that all code is correct. All code is correct, and that's nice. So we're, here we have our libRS. 
we've set up our result type, our error kind, and error pairs, which I think is kind of nice. Um, we can uh, derive from a cause. We can do like some other stuff. Still need to figure out a better way because we we can't give uh, custom reasons, which is slightly unfortunate. Uh, what else? Yeah, this is just a whole bunch of boilerplate. So we have a few files. We have lib, we have error, we have test. Um, in our examples, uh, is empty. Our benches is empty. We have our dot github. Uh, which contains a bunch of files. So code of conduct, contributing, issue template, pull request template. Um, stale bot kicks in every now and then. Our issue template is useful, uh, which is set up by uh, tool I wrote not too long ago called GitHub templates. Right, I showed it like last time on this thing also. It just uh, create some GitHub templates <sighs> for you. Okay, I need more coffee. <laughs> And basically, like the the moment this works, it's it's kind of like off to the races. All right. So right now, um, our language server just crashed because we're running an old Rust version and language, or you know, an unstable Rust version and language server is crashing now. Um, but the the idea is that we're using um, uh, um, the language server protocol, which is kind of cool because it's um, it's just this wire protocol. Uh, with different clients for different um, text editors. So uh, Vim has one language uh, client. So the Sublime, so does VS Code, right? You, you just install it once. And then on the other side, you have all the language teams, all the people that build programming languages and their communities. And they, they oh, sorry, I need to sneeze. <coughs> Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Um, so on the on the other side, um, you have you have all these like people that build these programming languages, and they um, they build the uh, language servers. So what a language server does is it looks at your source code, and um, it just figures out like, oh, what's going on here? Oh, you made a bug. You made an error here. Oh, there's a typo there. Or Hmm, we should probably format this or stuff like that. And it just talks over the wire. So in, instead of every single like editor needing to build custom support for every single language, they just need to build the best language client they can do. And every programming language needs to build the best language server that they can do. And together um, it allows for pretty much every editor to like have a really good experience. Um, so that's what you're seeing here, like Rust and language server. Whoops, problem. Um, but yeah, like mo most of this, like it, it works pretty well. It works better than some other languages, but um, there's a, uh, also, hey, Simon. <laughs> nice for you to join the stream. Um, but there, there, there's there's talks in Rustland right now about building something called Lip Syntax Two, uh, which will hopefully enable building better language servers. So li Lip Syntax Two is kind of interesting because someone came up with the brilliant idea of that um, your code being correct while you're typing it is the exceptional state, right? Most of the time, like say we're gonna add another method called outer right so let out right if if we stop right here just say i'm typing this right outer like this is invalid so is this so is this right like all of these are invalid states uh <laughs> simon says i was listening to some pretty good music but then i saw you were streaming oh thanks <laughs> I I appreciate people uh, putting music on hold for me, um, or well for me, so they come and hang out. Yay! <laughs> appreciate you, Simon. Um, but yeah, the 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 idea of lib syntax is your code is broken most of the time, so let's build a, a language 
parser, like a thing that can take broken Rust code and actually knows how to do it and just tries to like do everything else around it and, and, and you know, is, is just pretty good about it because that, that's how editing code works. It's, it's broken most of the time until you like finish typing, right? So um, yeah, that's going to be pretty exciting. They're, they're talking about like one slip syntax works of like merging it back into like the Rust um, compiler itself because the compiler itself also needs to uh, parse Rust source code, right? And like keeping two different implementations of the same parser. Oh my God, what did it just touch something? <laughs> keeping two, two implementations of the same like parser stuff. This is just like not useful. And then there's a wider discussion of making the Rust compiler more modular. So the, um, there's like two constraint solvers right now, one for lifetimes, one for borrowing, I believe, that are in, in standalone crates, uh, Polonium and Chalk. I, I forgot which one's which. Um, but then they're, they're talking about like making the Rust compiler more modular even, which you know, <laughs> I think this, the, the moment they start doing that, it's going to be like really big. Um, mostly in the sense that people might like be able to jump in and be like, oh God, we're going to like optimize the hell out of like Polonium today or we're like going to add more tests to this thing or hey, we want to have like better borrowing features and you know, it becomes like all more constrained and then you can like port it back into places and send for upgrades and Perhaps like someone else wants to build another language using Rust and they're like, oh, we want constraint solving for this language, right? Or like lifetimes. And then, um, you know, they, they, they can build a new compiler for their uh, cool lang using, actually this works really well for me, but it doesn't show up well on the camera. That's terrible. Hello, <laughs> I'm in prison. <laughs> it's not, I'm in prison. What, what do you say? When um, someone's like eyes are marked out, when you're like a uh, wanted. Yeah, anyway, let's not do that. Uh, that's weird. Uh, yes, okay. It's like from the cartoons, right? Almost. Is it from a cartoon? I don't even know. Wanted posters. I don't even know where I saw it. I, I don't think it's like anything recent. Maybe it used to be a case somewhere in the Netherlands. I, I forgot. <sighs> ba, 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 ba. Anyway um but yeah that, that's that's about everything about the language protocol um so what else is there to uh, this thing <laughs> i need a voice changer too <laughs> just like the blackout bars and um yeah like some uh, auto tune to lower my voice had a friend coming over this weekend and we were like playing around with other tune he's like a musician it's kind of fun <laughs> all right um i have a few like extensions for cargo the most uh common one is cargo clippy oh damn it anyway we broke cargo clippy uh we have cargo add which is uh, comes from the cargo edit module. Like this is a very important thing, um, cargo edit. Like the, this, in my opinion, should be part of uh, standard Rust. Because everyone, uh, whenever I see people like live coding and they don't have this, they're always like, oh, I forgot to update the right version or some version of that. I don't know, like this is what, what you really, really want. Uh, Boom, 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 boom. Uh, what else is there? So cargo add, cargo clippy, cargo watch is kind of fun. I know where it comes from. Uh, wait, does it say that? Pass cod cargo watch. Pass cod cargo watch. So what this allows you to do is um, you can say cargo watch and then it will run check by default and you can also say cargo watch uh, test and it will like run tests for you <laughs> or you can do it sequentially where first you check then you test uh, it, it's kind of nice 
So here an example is uh, cargo watch. And then now it just starts watching all this directory and just like, uh, oh. uh, let's remove an R there and then it's gonna be like, oh no, problem. Did you mean error? Yes, I did. <laughs> Ooh. And then, you know, done. That's really efficient. I can't run this on stream though, because for any non-trivial project, um, this will like break stuff. <sighs> It'll just sound on my computer. But, <sighs> All right. Um, do people have any questions about like my workspace or something? Are people curious about anything? Oh my God, this arm is so annoying. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm happy to help answer like any questions folks have. Um. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um. Yeah. What else is there? Is there anything else? Nah. Usually I just like go go about my way and then like start installing packages and start using them. And start doing stuff and putting stuff together, and uh, that's that's about it. Oh, I was wondering what happened to my camera. Okay, it was moved a little bit to the left. Hey, okay. Um, so I think that's it for my workspace. Uh, how long have we been going? We've been going for fifteen minutes. Simon asks, "Do you work from home?" And the answer is yeah. Uh, a lot of the time I do. Um, I also go to coffee shops a bunch. I used to have a, a co-working space office not too far from here, but it always ends up being like, I don't know, 200 bucks a month or something, right? Which is like two grand a year, which in turn means like, that's that's the amount of money I could spend to like do two overseas trips or I don't know, send my mom to a nice place for a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just thought it was like a lot of money and I didn't feel comfortable working there oftentimes because if, if you want like your own small office or all that other stuff, I, I don't know. <laughs> Simon asks, uh, I guess I kind of answered that question. Just moved and started working remote full time. I'm wondering how to keep sane sitting by myself every day. So the, the, the thing I've found works best for me is um, get yourself a daily routine of getting out the house, right? So I, I, I might not commute to uh, a workspace or anything, but I do have like my local coffee shop. And sometimes I work there for like half an hour or like an hour, I just bring my laptop and I sit down for a little bit and then I go back here, right? Um, or I just like go out, it's like a 10 to 15 minute walk. I go grab a coffee and I like walk back and then uh, that's good. <laughs> Kinta Rock says Twitch helps to keep sane. Also, <laughs> actually it kind of, it kind of, it's, it, I, I, you might be joking. I don't know if you're joking, but it, it's kind of true. It's like you get to hang out with people a little bit, sort of. <laughs> I, I like it a lot. Um, I know. I, I had a period in my life when, you know, I was working remote and I was in a new city. I, I just moved here in Berlin, to Berlin. I'd been living here for like six months, a year or something. And I, I was kind of lonely. I didn't have like any roommates. I wasn't comfortable in the place where I was living. Couldn't work from the place where I was living also, by the way. Just like too too small. And I don't know. That, that's hard. But um, I got cats at home. I part got a partner now right uh, so get to chat we get to like hang out Simon says uh, I found working from a cafe all day isn't very optimal all sorts of meetings but doing it for a bit uh, someday actually sounds like a really good idea yeah also the the other thing I can recommend is uh, during lunchtime get out the house um, ideally have some food Go for a small run, do some small exercise if you can. Um, I go to my gym a couple times a week. It's like a good gym. 
and I, I get to work there, do some exercise for like an hour and then come back and I feel like refreshed. Um, it's really good. <laughs> but yeah, just, just, just figuring out good reasons to get out the house every single day will help in the long run. Cause you, you, you can do it. You can like work from home, home without leaving the house, um, for like a month, maybe. Like at, at the four week mark, I always get a little bit like, oh, and then you keep it up at the six month mark. You're like, no, I'm done doing this. Like done, done. Um, Kintarok says, uh, are you employed or freelancing? Um, I'm self-employed and I'm not quite freelancing. Uh, I got a, I do grant work usually. Uh, <laughs> so I, I get money from grants, uh, which is what I've been doing for like two years now, I guess, sort of off and on, just kind of keep on rolling into it. I thought like after this grant, I'd be like done with grants, but nope, got one more. <laughs> and like probably one more after that. So I, I don't know. I, I hope things work out. I don't know. It's, 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 it's sort of like an in-between of being employed and freelancing because there are definitely people who are responsible for giving you money and it's not quite contractual basis because there, there's no super clear deliverables. Like with a the client, they're like, no, change it. No, uh, do better. Or, hey, uh, come into our office for a couple of weeks, months. Right. So it's, it's, it's different. Um, but the, the, yeah, I don't know. There, there's a lot of freedom there. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. But yeah, Simon, I, I, I hope you can like find some, some good rhythm. Like, um, yeah. Also, so one other thing that I had with like working from offices and working, like not from home is is doing these streams doing like live recordings always wanted to do them but i could never like afford the setup and or do them from like a public space so i don't know i i feel i feel there's like really big upsides to like working from home also um <laughs> the goal is to find out how to remove the downsides i guess uh yeah all right, let's try this. Simon says, I'm married, so I'm not alone by any means, but getting out every day is definitely something I need to do more. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Also, if you like don't have a gym or something, like just going for a uh, timing yourself, being like, I'm gonna go walk every day for 40 minutes on the clock, right? Like for 40 minutes, it's not quite an hour, but it's more than like a 15 minute walk. So you kind of, you force yourself to really go out there and you're like, okay, between 12 and 1240 is when I do my walk. And then, you know, try and get that in. And you're like, oh, I didn't get any work done. And you go for a walk and you come back and you're like, oh, I actually kind of feel good. Or maybe you're like, hmm, you come back and you're like, I should really nap. <laughs> and then you do that. Um, but yeah, all right. Yeah, it also really helps if you have like people around you. John, 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 John. All right, let's see. Uh, let's look at this. So this person opened the thing on nano HTML. No, really not HTML. It accepts the on-click property of the elements. It converts into JavaScript listener. And so when I pass a string containing HTML, and with the on-click attribute, and it's passed to DOM as is when the conversion to an event handler of a script which parses my app's content. I don't know. Could you perhaps? Could you perhaps create a repro? It's a, a code example. It's a bit hard. Whoa. Hold on. Oh, the washer is going hard. Hey. Uh, what you mean from just a salon? Thanks. There, handled. All right, this is cool. So, uh, lib support to cross-gen. 
this PR addresses issue 11. So I, I'm, I started doing like full on RFC style uh, posts for, uh, uh, for issues, <sighs> right? So here I was like, oh, um, oh, a little, little, little bit of context. So cross-gen, what it does is it generates a, a script directory for your thing uh, and a Travis YAML, which allows you to cross compile. So if we go here to uh, releases, you can see that this has created uh, five different artifacts. So a bunch of source code, but also um, for Linux, for uh, a couple other things, which is kind of fun, I think. All right, so looking here, right? We, we have uh, uh, one for, um, what's it called? Raspberry Pi, one for uh, Linux, completely self-contained. I one for oh, oh, oh. OS X. <laughs> but it, this, this is all just a binary, right? So this is an executable. And uh, you know, here's like the little help text that has, it allows you to like, you know, do, do some stuff with it. So I was like, hey, you know what would be cool? Someone here was mentioning like, uh, hey, these are all the steps we need to take to uh, create a, a shared library for like Android and Java um, and maybe even like Wasm. And I was like, hey, you know what we should have? Cross-gen should be able to like get a lib flag. Uh, that allows you to build not just uh, standalone executable, but also standalone shared libraries. So libraries you can link in. Um, so I wrote this whole RFC, pretty much. Of like, oh, this is what we should do. Here's like a guide level explanation of the behavior that we want. Here's like how to implement it, some other stuff. And I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm really getting into, into like writing these because it becomes like very clear sort of what's needed. Um, uh, and then this person was like, hey, you know, same person that like made the comment here was like, oh yeah, I'd love to work on this next week. And then Katarina came in and was like, well, I wasn't a plane and I like built it and sorry, <laughs> I didn't see the follow-up comments. So, you know, uh, here we are with this uh, cool PR. I figured we should review it on screen. Um, so let's let's take a look. So Kat saying, is something I quickly drew to, threw together on a plane, looking for some feedback. The CLI now has a dash dash lib flag, which they can do count when creating a template. Template needs to exist, but it's deprecated and points to template gen bin, just in case it shouldn't be a breaking change. Actually generating the templates, I'm not 100% sure what different and it says might be one that required for bin versus lib. So I just copied the templates directory for now. Also, a write block is quite ugly, considering that this approach generally isn't very modular. I'm wondering if it wouldn't be possible to have a folder which have its snippets. They're then assembled accordingly to some user config. What if I wanted Android and not WASM, but it's also binary? Again, work in progress. Happy to change stuff. Non-breaking for now. PR addresses issue. 11, the contentious added or changed. All right, so BLT virus has got some Windows remarks what do I know nothing about. Okay. Uh, let's see. And set up a build stage responsible to build the edge headers and publish on GitHub. Uh, in the form of, okay, okay. So I, I think what we need to do is we need to test run this just from looking at it. Specify the library template should be generated. So that's that's what we said of, um, 
Oh wait, isn't bool just huh. Wait, hold on. There's some review reviewy things here that we can do. So we're we're gonna get clone this thing in just a sec. And then we're gonna run it. And then we're gonna make some comments here. <laughs> All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so we go. Uh, cross gen. Let me get here. All right. Uh, build. Uh, actually, lib bin. No name. Uh, no, damn it. CLI, there we go. Then what we can say here is lib bool. Uh, lib cargo run. And now, now it's going to recompile. Uh, it's going to redo this file because it's changed. <laughs> Simon saying, after having streamed coding so much, do you sometimes narrate everything you do even if you're not streaming? Um, I don't think so. Oh, actually, only if I'm like stuck, like I can't get the thing done, right? I'm out of it and just, I can't focus. And I just start narrating. I'm just like, okay. Okay, so the problem is that we're not able to do this, right? And then it becomes more engaging instead of like getting lost in your own thoughts. You now need to speak up and make things clear because otherwise it will, will not be solved, right? And it, it helps focus. Uh, you can't really do it with other people around, but it, it, it can help if you're like super stuck. Um, it, it, like some, sometimes people say like uh, writing stuff down is the best way, but if you try and type it out and there's like a, there's a barrier there, uh, and also you, you want to focus on fixing the thing, even like finding pen and paper or like writing it down. If you're not used to it, it can also take more time, but speaking up is generally very low barrier, right? It's only once you get into like, oh, I can't make sense of the problem anymore that you like should write it down because then you can find relationships that you otherwise couldn't, but just, just to find focus again, it, it can be very helpful, I find. Um, so cargo run dash dash help. Oh. Uh, we need to do dash 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 help because we need to pass arguments into the thing, right? <laughs> so dash l dash dash lib. So th this already works. So what we can say here is, uh, I believe uh, lib should work well enough it defaults to false and is only set to true if you pass dash dash lib to the um, uh, to the bull This should make it slightly easier to access. Slightly easier to access in the code. Platform lib, lib.clone. Whoa, whoa. All right. Okay. Does that make sense, by the way, Simon? Out here, yeah, 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 because then you know, uh, this line can be uh, if lib uh, lib returns a bool, this line 
this becomes uh, we can remove um, this line. Yeah, Simon says, <laughs> sorry, I laughed slightly and I choked. <laughs> that was terrible, I'm sorry. Uh, no, just nursery rhymes and I bet you're sick and tired of it, but I never thought of it. But Simon's saying, uh, a writing problem that never worked for me. I would write too slow and get lost in train of thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> same. So here it says let template if lib is gen lib, otherwise gen bin. I like this. This is great. Okay. Uh, so we have like lots more statics. Check out this file. It's like mad. It's kind of cool. Bin script, bin deploy, bin everything. Write all. Yeah, I think that's fine, by the way. Um, that was very ni nice, actually. Very neat. <sighs> so it says, uh, create a new instance for binary target, gen bin, self, colon, colon, scaffold. Um, oh, so there's a scaffold, a generic scaffold one. Okay, okay. Um, which tags lib, which is a bool. It returns the instance of self. Interesting. So lib has now become a flag, <laughs> whether or not it's a lib. It's kind of uh, weird, I guess, but can't really think of a better way of doing this because we're creating a new instance. So it returns a result of self, right? So it creates a new instance of self. Internally, it just stores whether or not it's a lib. It's a lib is a bool, it's fine. Um, so are there any other things lib bool no it's fine actually self right self right self right app there zip copy item um, package name lib.so Yeah, I think this is actually kind of good. Uh, I want to ask, so at BLT Varus, Bruno, uh, the bunch of code look like, do you have any? So the, the, the question here becomes is like, how do you um, run this? Uh, perhaps a small example might be useful. Go on. C bind gen tutorial. Okay, so I'm, I'm for right now, I'm kind of unsure what the difference is between C bind gen and bind gen, but it's clear now. So C bind gen uh, generates bindings from Rust to C, and bind gen generates bindings from C to Rust. Uh, yeah. So th this is if you want to use uh, a C package inside of Rust, and this is if you want to use uh, a Rust package and compile it to C. So in this case, uh, cbindgen um, 
how does this work? So there's bindings.h, which I guess generated build.h main.c plus plus c bind gen rust bindings dash o uh, generated bindings dash h dot h uh, rust bindings uh, uh, c bind gen dot toml that needs to exist. Language C plus plus derive helper methods true. Um, oh, this is kind of cool. I think we should like go ahead and maybe like try out some stuff. Um, so C bind gen Um Okay, I need, sorry, it's, um, I need to think and thinking and talking is kind of hard. But my thought so far is right now the question is like, hey, maybe we should also install bindgen, which first off, it's factually incorrect. We would not need bindgen, we would need C bindgen. Um, and the second thing is, it doesn't just work because C bindgen needs a, target right uh so um a few notes here uh we would need c bungen not bungen here would you generate uh wrap for use in C, not the red. Um, a few quick notes here if we need some. To be consumed in C. Uh, consume from C, not the other one. Um, okay, second off. Sample. Do that. Uh, uh, that a uh, as well up to the user uh, Da, 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 da. Optional build .rs, c bindgen builder. I create write the file. Um, so here's another thing. There's a optional build .rs. Um, Uh, building with C bungeon can either be done from the command line or from build.rs. I'm not sure which uh, one is preferable. So here we go, Rust bindings, tutorial C bind gen, uh, build touch. Here we go. We link this one here again. Uh, we should 
probably pick one. My computer's overheating and that's perfectly fine. Cha 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 cha. And here it just says, oh, include generated bindings.h. Um, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Rust binding, C bind gen Palmo. Kind of like this. Derive helper methods, true, language C++. Uh, and then source, no mangle, no mangle. Reproduce C, reproduce U32, no mangle, no mangle. That's kind of cool. I wonder if there's a version where we can say, okay, no mangle, but only if you um, do this other thing. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, okay, I think this is... Uh, let's find cbang gen docs rss cbang gen actually I link this also in so we're just going through the pr reviewing everything i think most of it it's pretty great um we would need to add some more stuff to it <laughs> All right. Um bum ba dum bum bum ba dum bum 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 uh so here we go edit uh, oh, no, I need to edit my own. <laughs> edit C bind gen. I keep saying that word. There we go. Preview. So what I wonder is, um, should we generate a C and a C++ file or just a C file? Um, there seems to be a little bit of a difference there. Uh, like the general idea a lot. This would be fun to merge as is commented with a few small so quality improvements up there. All right, thanks for doing this. There we go. I'm, I'm cool with this idea a lot. Yeah, I'm actually thinking we perhaps should disable the DCO bot because people are keep on running into it. It's like really annoying. Here, DCO. Ah, just like for my own repos, not like for the bigger ones. Anyway, um, I guess this is a little config for this stuff. Okay. Whew. All right. Um, 
what else was there? So we've been going for 45 minutes, which is less long than usual. It's quite a while. I need to go in like not too long also. Um, we have done quite a bunch of stuff. Looked at CBind Gen. We've looked at uh, generating cross-platform library code. We've reviewed all of the PRs that we're in, the notifications that we're in. We've looked at, um, uh, well, <laughs> the way my setup is done. We've talked a bunch of like, you know, remote work and challenges. It was quite a bunch of stuff in like 45 minutes, <laughs> I think. Um, yeah. So for me, for the rest of the day, oh, I didn't realize I locked up one of the cats in here, but the cat was napping. It's really cute. Check this out. Right, right there. there oh. You see that? There's a little cat on the bed there. And it's sleeping. And it's like really cute and soft and cuddly. <laughs> Hope the other cat isn't like upset. I bet the other cat's also just like having a little cat nap. <laughs> Yeah, um, what else is there? Oh yeah, a thing I wanna do, but which I'm not gonna do right now is uh, I want to get an example working. Wait, hold on, I have a trick for this. I can go into keep. So I, I store a bunch of like stuff in my keep. So my, my calendar is fine to look at, but my keep is not fine to look at. Um, so sorry, I'm, I'm trying to finish this sentence. Um, there is, so, um, a thing I want, I want to get working actually, hold on, let's track back. Let's just talk for a second. Um, I had an idea the other day and it's a terrible idea, but kind of want to low-key work on this, I guess, um, which is uh, what if there was a modular backend that um, more or less could serve all your backend needs? Um, uh, for basic applications. So think of it as a combination of a database, embedded database, with some notification stuff, with some, um, you know, like endpoints. And I'm, I'm not exactly sure what shape it would take, but um, here's an example use case, right? So in, in next week, Saturday, I believe, Damn it. Yeah, it's already like next week. <laughs> there, There's going to be this thing here in Berlin where people go out and they clean up the little uh, uh, copper stones. I forgot what they're called, the cobblestones. Basically, it's like uh, people in the Holocaust that were deported uh, where they used to live. There's this artist, uh, made like a little copper stone, engraved their names in it, how long they lived when they were deported, and just put it in there. And they're, they're like not just here in Berlin, but they're, they're like all over Europe. But uh, the event is here in Berlin. The the idea is you go out and you, you just clean them up because people walk over them and like dirt accumulates, sometimes years of dirt, right? They become a bit hard to read. And it's, you know, kind of important that it's, it's an important part of history, right? Like remembering what horrible things went down and, you know, someone made all the effort of actually etching all these things out. So we as citizens here in the city should have a responsibility to go around and, and keep these things clean. And I was thinking, what if we could coordinate the effort, right? Perhaps a little bit naive. Um, you can think of like all sorts of downsides of sharing location and coordinating efforts, but let's let's just for, for a moment say that I wanted to build an app for friends and I want to have a login system that's tied to like some form of a, um, identity. And, you know, we, we really wanted to organize this thing. So I would send emails out and whatever. So there, there, there would be a few basic requirements. We would need like a, a user system, right? Like a login with credentials, uh, password resets, um, 
They share their email with me. I store that email securely in the database. They give me access to like send it to them. There's like some regulation constraints. There's, you know, uh, but the, the idea is they, they get a map and they can just, I don't know, either they get a general map and they're like, I'm just going to find cobblestones and you know, they clean them and then they take them off and then everyone else gets like, oh, which ones aren't done yet? And then we sort of see as the whole city gets cleaned up um, or different and you're like, oh, I want to get like a basic version. But the amount of time I would want to spend building this thing would be an afternoon. So that's say a good two, maybe three hours right and there, there's probably like a data set out there somewhere with all these things and and the hard part the thing i really would want to focus on is getting that data set loading it into a map and allowing people to edit it right that, that's the big the big part the big thing um downside uh, we can't build it like you know you, you need all this other stuff so how long do I think this would take to build from scratch? Well, if we talk from scratch, from scratch, a couple of months, right? Um, say in Rust right now, like Anno today, if we wanted to do it well, like everything in the checklist of what does an app need? And I don't like that. I, I want my tiny, silly project to have just like a baseline quality, like no encrypted data sent anywhere, right? Like we handle data correctly. Uh, we have some sort of like live notification system. Right? So people don't need to like hit the refresh button all the time. People should be able to install this thing offline. So it just works and they can like update it in some form of caching. I don't know, there, 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 there's quite a few like moving parts here. All of the moving parts are well understood. They're, they're not like mind breaking. The only hard part, I guess, is um, what if you want offline support? Let's ditch that, right? That's like a cherry on top. Um, but like say we want online support, that so you load the app and then you come back online and you, you know, uh, you just hit refresh and then, or the thing refreshes and then it updates the data set. I don't know. It should be doable, but it's, I can't think of how. <laughs> so I, I don't know there, uh, I, 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 I feel, I feel that most of the stuff required for this, um, should be workable. It should, it should be possible, but it isn't, it isn't yet. And you know, the, there, there's things like this called like Firebase, like parse the backend. I believe Firebase was bought by Google or was created by Google. Parse was bought i'm pretty sure by facebook then there was sunrise by uh, some other uh, revolution db revolt db whatever uh, evolution db uh, something like that they had a, a white blob as a mascot uh, they spent too much office money on office space i know that for a fact but yeah uh, foundation db Re rethink db there we go <laughs> thank you yeah, the, they also had like their Node.js backend as a service kind of thing, but you could self-host it and it was like really cool because you, you gave, uh, oh, you want to sign up with Twitter? Well, here's like just one hit, you're done, right? I don't know, there, uh, there, there's just all these things and ev it's so repetitive and everyone keeps on rebuilding them and or uh, worse, people are like, oh, you know, <laughs> The way forward is is not to build this. Let's let's remove all monoliths. Let's you know build functions as a service, and you can just like reuse functions. And I I don't know. I, I'm just hearing like here's a whole bunch of complexity. What I want to do is I want to pay five bucks and rent for one month or two months to like host this thing or whatever, and then just like drop my one app on there. I tweak it a little bit. So, oh, cool. Here it serves up a map and here it serves up the other thing. And uh, here's like the map data that's just from an endpoint and I build up most of the front endy stuff. Right? And we like have a login service and we like have, a, you know, all, everything with accounts is just done. And maybe like some standard, whatever, almost bootstrap it, right? And then, then 
from there we built the interesting thing we're just collaborating on the map and that, that's it that, that's our app that's all we wanted and now it's possible and kind of needs to be centralized in, in a way that you know because we want to keep control of this for example i might like look at all the uh emails oh my friends are sick just got a message uh yeah i don't know <laughs> that's that's my rant right there i just don't don't want to deal with all these things and, and people are like oh but how are you going to scale it out and i'm just like what do you mean scale it out <laughs> there's there's zero scenarios in which i would want to make this scale beyond a, a cheap server it's like aimed at what if we get 40 people online right or maybe a hundred or maybe 1,000, like with the rest on benchmarks getting like 4 million requests a second. You put a fairly efficient key value store behind it and like burst, uh, what do you call it? The burst tier of Amazon or something comparable. You know, if there's a peak of like, oh, 1,000 people signed up at the same time, then you can handle that. And it's like fine. And then at midnight Berlin time, it's like offline again. It's like, I don't know. Ugh. I just want there to be a modular version of that thing. And if you ever like want to build something else, like, oh, you reassemble components in different order. And you're like, okay, cool. We're going to like make this thing, uh, I don't know, scale it out over multiple computers and whatever. <laughs> it's like it's businesses have no incentive to provide this. Ruby on Rails is too good for consulting people, I guess. And then... There's like all these closed off backends that exist for this purpose of like they host it for you because they know what they're doing. I don't know. Everything seems like it doesn't hit the spot. I just want to be able to build like my crappy services, put them on a box somewhere, be like, here you go, friends. And then my friends are like, okay, cool. That's nice. That's useful. Oh. I want to build a forum software. Oh, here's like some components we can like now reuse and we can just stuff it in there or, you know, make it host, like have a generic routing system or whatever. Or someone builds like a whole forum thing and we just forward it and then we like running two binaries, one for the forum software, one for the front end thing, right? With the auth and all the other stuff or different, uh, have it like be able to run WASM container functions or uh, something like that. I don't know. Dude, there is, I see a version of this thing being a reasonably good idea. Because uh, there, there's, people keep on building like the, uh, trying to rebuild Nginx or being like, well, we live in Kubernetes land now and we need like uh, service meshes, right? So I'm, I'm kind of going on a rant here, but I'm not intending to go on a rant. I'm just, I want, <laughs> I'm seeing a thing that doesn't exist and I want it to exist. I like people keep building service meshes, which is great for enterprise and there's money in enterprise. But if you're like a home tinkerer and you want to build like your, your own little thing, then it doesn't exist. Like the, the, the peer to like Beaker does a much better job there. But you know, Beaker's constrained by like not being able to run on mobile. Um, and some people they they want to like i don't know maybe they do want to make money off their apps and they're like what if we did write a server so we can retain control okay yeah sure what do you do then right uh, there should be a thing for that <laughs> and uh, it shouldn't be like ruby or uh what, what do we call it rails because rails is like uh here's your template toolkit now start building this template thing oh you want to upgrade you need to redo your templates nah, it would be different from that We'll be like, here's your runtime. Here's like your, what if you upgrade Nginx? Well, it still works, right? <laughs> but if you upgrade this database, well, it auto migrates or something, right? I don't know. It should have something like that. Um, anyway, that's that's me for story time. My friend is half canceling on me. No, he's not. Um, uh, so I could go a little bit longer. Anyway, um, that's it. I hope it was interesting. Thanks everyone for coming out today. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I still need to upload the previous video. So um, I'll upload the previous video. I'll upload this one like tomorrow or something. All right.
Peace. <laughs> bye, 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 bye.